Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I'm I've trying to cram eight wines into this video. They're, they're a sort of mishmash of styles and uh, haven't got enough for each uh, each one or each pair to sustain an entire video by themselves. Uh, so I thought I'd just cram them in and see how we get on. Uh, first two I've got are from India, from the Fratelli Winery. So the first one is, uh, it says just called Fratelli Classic White 2011 uh, Chenin Blanc based blend. So the, the next one's a Chenin and then the one after that's a Chenin. So that's why I've started with this. Let's have, see how India can cope once I've got the screw cap off. Now I had read from this winery in uh, a previous video, or it depends on whether I get to post it, it might be a subsequent video. But anyway, the Cabernet Sauvignon, I stuck my nose in there and there was this very burnt smell about it. Fortunately, I stick my nose in here and it smells clean, fresh, a uh, bit of pithy pear, pear skin, you know, that's ever so slightly waxy, uh, honeyed character that pear skin gets. Yes, it, it, it has got some shin in it, it smells good. But then, when you come to taste it, there is just a little bit of that burnt character in the background. Good news is, it's not too much. Even better news is, it's got this rounded, soft, uh, very ripe apple pear, guava edge too. Um, finish is maybe just a little bit um, uh, solid and flat rather than perky, but um, not bad at all. Uh, let's see, this is the next one is uh, Fratelli's uh, Chenin Blanc 2011 um, from the Maharashtra region. They're both from the Maharashtra region, and I'd love to tell you I knew where that is, but um, I don't. Oh well. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between, uh, or what, what other grapes would have gone into the first one to make it a blend. This, um, certainly if I, I stick my nose in, and it feels a fuller, a fuller fleshier style uh, than the first one. Still feels like it's going to have that crispness. Uh, Chenin Blanc uh, is a grape that uh, in warm regions still retains some acidity. And um, yeah, here it feels like there's more of that guava, more of the pear, and uh, yeah, just, just a bit fuller style. It smells, it still smells good. Very, very respectable wine. Um, yes, there's a, there's a little bit of um, a zippy citrus freshness in there, there's some, some apple, as I say, this pear and more exotic guava notes, a little bit of that musky character as well. Um, not so much a uh, herby spice, there's an ever so slight hint of ginger, but um, it's more on that, you know, if you get those um, slightly gritty pear skin characters, that, that's the type of, um, of fruit that's coming through there. Very happy to drink some more of that. Uh, we are in more regular South African, uh, more regular Chenin uh, territory now with the next one, which is Mui Bly uh, Chenin Blanc 2011, and it says on cultivar. I don't know why they bother putting cultivar on the, the name. It just means great variety, short for cultivated variety. Uh, wine of origin, Paul. This is keeping on the varietal theme there, so it's got that rounded pear, more of that guava, but in terms of um, its, um, it, feel, it feels like it's going to be a rounder, uh, more solid wine, uh, and there's maybe a little bit more fragrance and a bit more floral character coming through here. Uh, so yes, it smells a little bit more complex than the, the one before. The one before was good, but this smells a bit better. Oh, that's pretty tasty, that. A um, bit of honey, a bit of apple. Um, uh, but then the, it's more this rounded flesh and just when you think it's going to be maybe that little bit too rounded that's when the citrus uh, freshness kicks in on the finish leaves your mouth perky and alive and uh, ready to have another bite of something I'm not going to have another bite of something I'm going to have a Alsace Pinot Blanc courtesy of uh, Dopf au Moulin and it's a 2001 Pinot Blanc soft friendly slightly yeasty apple character coming through here uh, there's a juiciness, um, there's a round uh, richness, it's, it's Pinot Blanc's not, one, not an incredibly fruity grape, you can tart it up in the way that you can Chardonnay, but here it feels like they've uh, maybe just aged it on the leaves to give it a bit more creamy nutty fatness, but um, in terms of fruit, variety, fruit types there's maybe a little bit of vague pear, a um, bit of peachiness there, uh, but it's um, one of those wines where uh, it feels like it would pass what I call the empty bottle test, as in you put it on a table, uh, it's not maybe everyone's first choice but wouldn't be surprised if it was one of the first bottles to be emptied. Tasty, tasty. One of those wines that, um, uh, yeah, doesn't, it creeps up on you, I suppose. Um, it's uh, not uh, overtly fruity. Yes, there's some peach there, that, yeah, there's some pear, um, but uh, there's a little touch of spice in there, maybe ginger, maybe even a touch of cinnamon or something like that. Uh, but it's this more, this rounded, fresh confidence. Uh, so rounded and fresh. It's a nice combination because uh, um, it's not a sweet wine, but it feels like um, 
because of that creamy edge from Lee's aging, um, it's got the weight enough to uh, get to let it hold its head high when it's good with some quite weighty food. Uh, but then it's got the freshness on the finish, so you're not left with your mouth feeling over flabbed. Tasty. I like. I, I'm enjoying these more than I more than I expected. Let's try the final four. First one of these is Reymat, uh, Castel de Reymat, uh, Sarello Chardonnay. So Sara, we, we are in uh, Catalonia here, Costa del Segre to be precise. Um, and Sarello is one of the uh, traditional grapes of Cava along with uh, Macabeo and Pareada. Almost something like lychee here. Um, that uh, chirimoya custard apple uh, richness, uh, but then uh, a bite of peachy freshness, maybe more nectarine than peach. And um, it smells perky. Um, it smells like it's going to be um, more like an honest, honest mouth of the fruit rather than anything uh, overwhelmingly complex. But it smells like it's going to be satisfying. If I could criticise it, it's maybe a touch confected, but um, it's got what I call strawberry mivy lolly flavour. So then, yes, there is a bit of this red berry, um, as, and that red berry when it's um, almost on the yogurt edge, vanilla, um, peach. And uh, yeah, it's a, a, a little bit of freshness coming through on the finish, and uh, very juicy, very tasty. I'm um, yeah, um, I mean not 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 very immensely classy, but um, one of those definitely a second glass of wine. Um, yeah, Raymat sometimes uh, fails to uh, hit the spot with me, but that one I do like that. Next one, Mora Alta uh, Chardonnay Viognier 2011 from San Juan in Argentina. I have to say, for something with Viognier in here, it's not leaping out of the glass, um, and uh, it feels it feels quite uh, neutral. Um, honestly, I really can't smell all that much. It's okay. Um, feels like they've picked the Chardonnay very, um, or there's some part of it they've, they've picked very early, and it's got this what I call the smoky elderflower under ripeness. Um, I no, I mean there's I, a deficit of character would be a polite way of putting it. Oh. Uh, yeah. Next one. Uh, we are back in South Africa here with Ridgeback uh, Viognier 2010, produced and matured at the Langevevacht farm in Paul. Well, they've aged this in French oak and uh, there's this uh, quite rounded, toasty richness coming through. The weird thing is that Viognier has got enough richness of, it own and I'm, of, 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 of its own and I'm just wondering whether it's uh, well, what I call the cream and custard treatment. Do you need uh, big fat wine with big fat oak? Uh, yes, there are some nice exotic characters coming through. So it's that uh, peach kernel, uh, a bit of the apricot um, and there's this muskiness coming through. It smells like there was some quite tasty fruit there in the first place, but um, it's not sure about the oak. Uh, it's because it's, the oak. The, 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 there's a sweetness to the fruit, and there's a sweetness to this toasty oak. That it's like sweet on sweet. And it's okay. Uh, I mean, there is this uh, bit of a tangy citrus freshness that's um, that's perking it all up. Um, uh, that it's not overripe, uh, but. Uh, I would still say that the one of the, the finish you're left with is slightly on that cloying, claggy, sweet side. Um, I, I, if they were going to put it in oak, uh, my choice would have been a quite a bigger, a much bigger barrel than uh, than it feels like it's been in a small barrique. Um, yeah, maybe sort of 500 litres or bigger, and an older barrel for longer, uh, calming some of that fruit down because there's no shortage of tigger-like bounce in that fruit. Um, but um, but yes, it's just that that finish has got this overlay of sweetness, overlay of sweetness, and um, it would. I know lots of people who, would, who will hoover it up and just say that's that's extremely tasty. But for me, it's almost that little bit over the top. Good, but could have been better. Final one's a famous name: Torres Vina Esmeralda, and um, 2011 vintage. Um, I've probably said it on these videos before, Torres is one of those names, if you see it on a wine list that you don't recognise anything else, it's a pretty safe bet. If you want uh, a red, go for Sangre de Toro, if you want a drier, um, a fresher style, go for Vina Sol, and if you want something a bit more aromatic and uh, slightly sweeter, this is usually a Best Buy. And it's... As you expect, juicy jelly, uh, but not over the top jelly, it's got the rose petal, it's got the a uh, sappy citrus freshness coming through um, and, uh, and and the finish you're left with is not claggy uh, it's uh, it's got this um, it's got this fruit sweetness yes a touch of residual sweetness by itself but uh, the, the main flavor is of, of this ripe rounded friendly fruit 
Um, so, um, uh, perfect summer wine. Uh, the only problem is, I don't know if you've noticed during the course of this video, which is being done on June the 15th, so uh, pretty near the, the, uh, the, the, the longest day of the year, it's been getting steadily darker and darker outside and now it's tipping down with rain. Uh, so, if it were a classic summer's day, I'd happily set into a lot of these. As it is, uh, I don't know if I need a glass of port or something. I'm sure I'll manage a glass of one or two of these later on. See you soon.